Hello everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. This is part 4 of a multi-episode series covering an introduction to rigging. Today we're going to construct our mechanisms for our rig. And what do I mean by that? I mean the FK and the IK controls and the driver that allows you to move from one to the other. So let's get started. Okay, let's quickly just go over what I mean by FK and IK. So FK means forward kinematics. And forward kinematics is basically a control structure where the parent object influences the child object. So let me just turn on FK first to show you what I mean. This control being the parent affects the child, par child which affects in turn its child. So this is how I, what I mean by forward kinematics. So forward kinematics means that it influences down the chain of controls. Conversely, inverse kinematics is basically the opposite, where the control up here influences the joints going back down to the root. So let me just switch on IK and I'll show you what I mean there. And typically in an IK joint or IK control scheme, you have a uh, controller for the overall direction of the um, joint chain or bone chain. And then you have a sort of pole vector, which determines where that sort of elbow joint sort of directs itself. And if I show you how this is built, because this is what we're going to build today, what you will see is that we actually have three different joint chains acting together to create this control. I'm just going to show the joints without the controls. So I just go into my armature selection uh, context menu and then select um, viewport display and turn turn off shapes. So I'm just showing you how this actually works. So the controls aren't gone. They're just being re-represented as the original bones that they are built from. And as you can see, there are actually three different joint chains working together to create this rig. And if I switch between the two, our deformation rig is actually conforming to either one of those two joint chains or bone chains. One is conforming to the FK, the forward kinematic joint chain, whereas when I switch it to IK, it's following the IK joint chain. So what we're going to do today is build the mechanism that makes this thing work. And then in the next video, we will cover how to make the actual controls. Okay, I've opened up the last tutorials file. Basically, we are continuing from where we left off in the previous video. So as you recall, if you go into our rig and pop into pose mode, we set out our deformation rig. So that's all working still. That's all good to go. Yep. All right, so you might be wondering why are we even bothering building this sort of control scheme? Well, when you pass this over to an animator, they like to have as much control as possible. And this especially becomes important as we get into more complicated rigs. If you plan on doing, say, a bipedal rig with legs and arms, you kind of want to give the animator that kind of control where, for instance, if they're doing a walk cycle, um, you'd want to have that IK sort of functionality. Whereas if that character might be doing a jump, you might want to switch over to FK because you don't want the legs to sort of stretch behind and have to compensate for that movement. Um, another example, for instance, is if a character was doing a push-up, um, you wouldn't do that in an FK situation. You would kind of do that in an IK situation because you can put the hands on the ground and they'll stay still. Anyway, let's get moving. All right. so. To get started, we need to think about how FK and IK works. So the only real controls that we're going to be manipulating in this rig are these three main joints. We're going to be duplicating these joints here in order to create the kind of control we need. So I'm just going to pop into orthographic view, pop into orthographic view, and then we're going to select these three joints or these three bones. Now, the interesting thing about this, the reason why we're only selecting these three joints or three, these three bones is because this bone chain will always be a, a child 
of our global controls or the control that lies underneath it. Because this control at the bottom is essentially um, the parent of everything, it's the base of the actual hand joint or the robot arm, we don't really need to include this as having a secondary controller. So it's really only this joint chain that we need to duplicate. So in that, with that being said, let's jump into edit mode by pushing tab. And then we are going to duplicate this twice. Now, because I got this centered in the world, I want to grid snap this uh, joint chain when I duplicate it to somewhere on this grid backwards and forwards, just so I can show you what, how it's working. And it's also good for you as an organizational thing to get used to uh, using the snapping tools inside of Blender because they are very useful. So turn on snapping up here with the magnet icon. We're going to turn on um, increment, keep increment turned on, and then turn on absolute grid snap. If you turn this on, basically whenever you are snapping along the grid, it will snap to these points in the grid perfectly rather than like in between or anything like that. Another thing we should do is make sure you've got active element turned on because we want to duplicate this from the base of this joint chain. So select from the top down to the base of your rig. And then we're going to push shift D to duplicate. And as you can see, it's snapping to that grid perfectly. Again, we're going to duplicate it forward as well. In this case, I'm going to duplicate it forward in front of the um, rig. And now we need to rename these things before we get started with anything. So I want to give this one a control prefix and this one also a control prefix. But then I also want to denote that this one's going to be an FK and this one's going to be an IK. So let's just select our controllers, what well, will be, uh, become our controllers and select our, um, our bones and rename our bones. So as you can see, because we've duplicated our um, hand joint, with the original deformation, it's inherited this naming conventions as well. So we need to rename this to control. In my case, I like to say control and then FK and then hand dot zero zero one. I'll do the same thing down the joint chain. And again, with the IK, I'm going to give that the prefix control IK underscore arm dot zero zero one. And the cool thing about Blender is that it actually remembers uh, if you've named an object um, more than once with the same name. So if I want to, I can just I can just hop on my mouse over this uh, name, copy it, select the bone that I want to have the same naming convention and then paste it in and it gives it that second number straight away. I love that about Blender. As long as you're following that sort of naming convention where you have a dot followed by the actual number of the joint or the bone. I'm going to do the same here, thing here, but this time I'm just going to give it the name hand. And then 001. Alright, so these will actually become the controls. Um, actually, the one thing I should mention is that these, these two bones here, they aren't going to be actually used in any sort of control. So they're more like mechanisms. And in that case, I actually like to rename these as mechanisms because again, Blender does detect that these things are mechanisms. And if you end up uh, keyframing your whole rig, it actually avoids keyframing these if they do have the right um, prefix. So mechanism IK arm.001, mechanism IK arm.002. And because this is going to be the only control we use for the um, IK, apart from that pole vector I mentioned earlier, um, I'm just going to give that the, the uh, prefix uh, with control. The other thing we need to do for the IK side is duplicate or create a new joint that will become that po uh, pole vector. And in this case, I like to just extrude. I'm going to switch back to bounding box in selection. Switch it back to global. Um, Bounty box, and I'm just going to extrude outwards like that. Push E to extrude, and then I'm going to remove the parent, and then just move that back a little bit. All right. I'm going to go into my object properties for the armature, and I'm going to change it from stick to octahedral just to show you what's going on here. 
All right, so we've got two duplicates of our joint chain. Oops, as you can see. We can now turn off snapping blood away. We don't need that anymore for now. Okay, so with our FK joint chain, it's actually nothing that we really need to do on a mechanism s side of things. This one is actually going to just have controls attached to it. The big thing that we're gonna do is give this some control. So we're actually gonna give this an IK constraint. The first constraint that we're gonna give to this entire rig is the IK constraint. So to do that, pop into pose mode, click on our controller, actually go into edit mode first, and then we're going to release this from being a child of this joint chain. Cause this joint chain, this joint shouldn't be the, is no longer going to be the child of this, uh, this bone chain here. So because it's going to become the main controller for the inverse kinematics. So we just push alt P to clear the parent and we're just going to select clear parent. And now this control will actually be the child of this bone here, the base. So we're actually going to reparent that to the base and make it keep offset. So as you can see, it creates this relationship line between our controller here and the base. And now let's tab back into pose mode and create that constraint. So to create the constraint, select your IK control then select the second joint down the chain and then push control shift C and you'll get an add constraint video uh, dialog box and we're going to choose inverse kinematics and as you can see it's created it's turned this bone um, yellow and look what happens when we start playing with the hand control from the get-go without changing any of the settings it starts going really weird and the reason for that is that we haven't told blender how far down the joint chain or how far down the bone chain that we want this inverse kinematics to affect the rig we only need to have this affect the rig on two bones so we select our ik constraint we go to our context bone constraints menu and as you can see in the bone constraint there is now a constraint um, a dialog box basically inside the settings of that bone and we need to at change a few settings. So the first thing we need to change is the chain length. We need to change it to two bones. So it's affecting the first bone and then the second bone and then it no longer affects the rest of the rig. So we switch that to two. And now you'll see that that relationship between the IK constraint has changed to finish and terminate at that second bone. And now look what happens when we play with that now. It looks pretty good so far, doesn't it? But we've run into a couple issues. If we start moving this around in 3D space, we have no control over where this elbow is going to be pointing. We can control it somewhat with this uh, parent control, but it's very tricky to use. As you can see, it's very haphazard and if I switch over to Euler's and rotate the Y we could do it like this have this as a control and lock off everything else and that's a perfect personal preference but it's actually quite nice to have a separate control that guides the elbow around so to do that we're going to go back into our constraint settings and we're going to assign this bone as the pole vector so basically this pole target will be this bone so to do that we're going to see what the name of this bone is and in this case it's just going to be called bone because we haven't named it anything oh we have duplicated it so we're going to call it control ik arm pole vector dot zero zero one so I'm going to copy that and then in that constraint, I'm going to add that pole target as our pole vector. But first we need to tell that it's going to be part of the pole vector is going to be part of our rig. So we're going to choose our rig object as the pole target and then the bone in which it's actually going to be acted upon. So we just post that pole target in there. And as you can see, it's kind of spazzed out there. 
we need to actually assign the pole angle as well but because we have it set um, perfectly linear we can just give it the pole angle of 90 degrees or in this case minus 90 degrees and now that will work as as we see fit so as you can see if I move that pole vector around it's now working working perfectly with that arm rig so that's all we need to do for the IK at the moment what we need to do now is assign this bone as being the child of our base uh, deformation joint so let's quickly do that we will keep the offset again so now when this thing moves around you can see now it's all working together all right so that's the that's one of the hard parts out the way now we need to actually make this work in tandem with our deformation joints and have the IK and FK work together as a switch. But since this video is already running a bit long, we will continue this in the next video. So until then, catch us.